Hi, this is Ms. Bahawk. Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast, where you can get fresh ideas for your training, nutrition, and lifestyle to immediately put to use. Listen in with Marcus Philly, the creator of Functional Bodybuilding, and myself. Hi, I'm Marcus Philly, and we're broadcasting from Revival Strength in San Rafael, California. We'll be talking about avoiding burnout, keeping your passion alive for training, and fueling your body and mind so you can look good, move well now, and for years to come. Looking back at Awaken Training Series, we're covering the key themes of functional bodybuilding as they've evolved over time. If you or your clients are still looking for ways to improve movement quality and progress with purpose, dive into the details of what makes FBB style workouts so effective at getting stronger, faster, and better without the burnout. ATS. Yeah. It's been quite a while. It has been. Many launches, hundreds and hundreds and actually now thousands of people, right, that, yeah. have, that have gone through this in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like it's been cool to watch the behind the scenes of all the work that goes into it uh, leading up to the launch, the excitement that people have getting into the program the excitement that they have before it starts in that week then yeah. getting started the questions that roll in um i don't know there's just so much that goes on within this that i feel like i'm not sure if everybody has an idea of like all the different moving parts that need to happen in order for this to be like this amazing experience for people and then i also think about uh you know, I've always wondered, and this is like when we talked first on the Airborne Mind Show, like what is going through your head when you sit down, open up the computer, and you are writing Awaken Training Series? Mm. And at this point, it's like <clears throat> you've developed the four iterations of it, but um, at this point, I'm wondering, okay, are there any changes you've made now that time has gone by hundreds of people have gone through it and maybe there's been feedback or actual experimentation that you've seen come out of it that you're like oh maybe I want to tweak this or change this part up or add this progression into the mix Um, I don't know I think those are all fascinating things to dig into yeah well I, I think it's really just a this this can be a conversation about what has stood out to me as the most important aspects of delivering a group template of functional bodybuilding to people. What are the aspects of functional bodybuilding that have resonated the most with our audience over a period of time? Um, How do you, how have I been able to try and keep the general audience in mind when thinking of writing this? Um, you know, where Revival Strength is an individual coaching business in that we have lots of clients from all over the world that we write customized training programs for using our training philosophies and principles, much of which are influenced by functional bodybuilding. So how do you, how do I step back from that mentality and say, well, what are the principles that are the that have had the biggest impact um, generally? How do we put that into a group design? Um, so, if there's listeners that have training facilities that they program for groups, if they're thinking about how do I make five people at the same time fit with one program, ten people at the same time fit with one program, what are some things to keep in mind? And, um, yeah, it's changed a bit for me since when we first started. Um, When I first started, I was very much wanting to give people exposure to the style of training that I was, I had found success with over the years. And there were parts of that that were a reflection of my competitive CrossFit background There were parts of that that were a reflection of me trying to continue to achieve balance in my life as a professional 
uh, you know, as a business owner, a professional coach, uh, having a family, and then also being an athlete. Um, and then there were parts of that were just a pure exploration of creativity in this new f- training philosophy that I was calling functional bodybuilding, that we're calling functional bodybuilding. And um, now what I feel is most important and valuable is the part about creating a a training platform where people can truly get um, can maintain some level of control and quality in how they move so I've use the mantra simple is strong and that quality matters and that positions matter and that we want to build people up we don't want to burn them out these are the things that I think about the most now when I look at group designs it's very easy to make stuff harder It's not easy to reduce complexity, to regress in movement, you know, in movements, to use lower skill exercises and still get people to experience feeling like they worked hard. That is not an easy thing to do. There are gyms, there are coaches that struggle with it all over the world. How do I give somebody something simple but make them feel like they really worked hard and that they got their money's worth today? That is so challenging. Anytime I hear coaches say, oh, I just got a bunch of clients that are just addicted to the intensity, I know that they're part of that audience. They don't know how to peel it back, deconstruct it, make it simple, but still hard and effective. Um, And that's where Awakened Training Series and Functional Bodybuilding has, I think, redefined a lot for people. I look back at the programs that I've written, and I've spent some time doing some editing here and there. There's some workouts that are in there that are just flat out hard. (laughs) and They're just... Like, I look at it, I'm like, thinking of anybody that's ever said, like, oh, man, ATS isn't hard enough. Like, really? Like, <laughs> did you do these workouts? Because <laughs> I'm looking at this, and that's brutal, you know? Um, I mean, shoot, like, in some version, I've done every single workout in all of those series. Like, and so I know that they're potent, effective. Um, but... Uh, in, in seeing, you know, most of it, what's what's beautiful about it is that there is a true blend of low intensity days, some higher intensity days. There's a balance. Uh, of course, it's not perfect for everybody because it's not written for any one person. It's written for a, a kind of a call them an avatar. The, you know, the avatar is somebody who's got around 90 minutes, give or take, to train every day five days a week, who's got a a decent movement base, understands a little Olympic lifting, understands a little gymnastics, you know, can do some strict gymnastics. Like that, if that person does this, they're going to, you're going to get a great dose. If you fall outside of that, you're going to have to make some adjustments or you're going to maybe be behind a little bit. You're going to, you know, whatever it's, that's how it's built. But, but looking at it, it's like, there's, there is thoughtfulness around today's hard intentionally we're making i want you to push today's your increasing effort day you're going to actually try and go faster every set which is hard to do but tomorrow we're going to be doing weight training tempo weight training and your conditioning is going to be a a controlled pace grinder you know so a day that's going to leave you kind of maybe laying on the floor feeling a little like whoa that was tough but then the next day you're not going to be laying on the floor you might finish and be like oh i'm not laying on the floor I didn't like, I didn't wor- no, but you worked hard, you you got a good sweat, and you're saving it because Friday there's going to be another intensity day. And then Saturday's going to be a little lower intensity. 
And so that's kind of how it goes. And I think that those are super valuable principles to try and teach people to for for coaches that are interested in developing that that skill set. How do we make? How do we? What does it? What does it look like to to do a to write a program that actually gives people a great like the the feeling of like man, I got some good work in today, but I didn't just like you know pound my head against a, a wall with it in crazy intensity and and we, we get that you know we get people saying man those that workout was tougher than i thought it was going to be i felt really good afterwards like it really pushed me but we weren't racing against the clock we weren't doing anything that was like intentionally over the top hard we were focused and intentional about the, the process so that's sort of uh big picture biggest thing there that I, 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 I'm thinking about these days I think to break down the components of the sessions you know what makes for a great group, group design I think that the warm up is something that is so valuable there's so many movements uh, go to functional.bodybuilding on Instagram and just peer through our, you know, page where we now have ID cards on every single post that actually tell you kind of the emphasis of that movement. We've got a ton that are labeled warm up. So many movements that really fall perfectly into the warm up phase of training prehab, prep, skill acquisition motor control learning, developing mind-muscle connection. There's 10 minutes in every group session to get people warm. That might, you know, 10 to 12 minutes. And make it purposeful, not just like PVC pipe passers, right? Our warm-ups are legit. And that moves people right into a very focused and, and quality strength session. So the, the 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 strength sessions, in my opinion, are now it's like we got one core lift, two accessory lifts. The accessory lifts are functional bodybuilding, you know, esque. They have all the qualities that people see in our page and what we're doing with unilateral movements, changing movement patterns and planes of motion. Uh, adding complexity as people are developing their skills, but not being like, okay, today you're doing a, a, a goblet squat and then tomorrow you're doing a squat clean. No, thoughtful, purposeful progressions, using tempo uh, thoughtfully to progress people from higher time under tension to lower time under tension so they can build load correctly with good motor control. So a warm up that's 10 to 12 minutes into a core lift. Um, into a superset of some accessory movements that are paired according to like classic movement patterns and then a conditioning piece that varies in intensity level based upon the population we're working with but that has some work rest uh, component some control point in there where the athletes that are doing it are not just moving mindlessly they're moving with intent and that could just be the movement selections that we have to slow people down so they're they're yeah they're rowing hard they're doing kettlebell swings but then they got to crawl and they got to crawl for 30 meters and they got to crawl with a weight plate on their back so that slows them down and we had a client in here yesterday doing a conditioning workout that had um bike and walking lunges, which can happen fast. So she would move quickly and she'd get her heart rate up. And then she would go into a, a plank in this conditioning, like a static isometric, which slowed her down. And then back onto the bike and then some lunges. And then she had to crawl. And it was a reverse crawl, which was awkward for her because she hadn't done it before. So that slowed her down. So the, the, the intentional placement of certain movements makes for you know function, functional bodybuilding style conditioning piece um and then yeah that that and th that 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 creates a a well-balanced day and then a well-balanced design of course has to have the right 
blend of movement patterns, you know, a high day, a low day, a high day, a low day kind of thing so that people aren't getting just one day after the next, like super high intensity. Um, but that's, that's kind of where I sit now in looking at the past, you know, year and a half, two years and all the people that have participated, what was the resounding, like, oh man, that really taught me that. Yeah, I think that's uh, such a huge part of what makes Awaken Training Series a program that people, let's say you don't even look at it from the coach's perspective and you just go through it as a user and as a, you know, as an athlete or client, you are like, wow, my body feels so good. I don't feel so beat up after each workout and I think it it is these subtle details of like the intentional highs and lows throughout the week the different ways that you're able to pull out of people like this is on a a tempo training day where it's mostly let's say FBB work right Mm -hmm. and the conditioning is not you know, increasing effort. It's something that's a little lower key, maybe even not for time or move steady. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I still worked hard. A huge part of that is the movement pairings that you have and the way that you've structured each of it, which allows you to be like, oh, I have another gear. I didn't mm-hmm. know this existed. So that's great. And then I think, like you said, in the warm ups and even in conditioning pieces where you have static isometric stuff, um, that's something I don't know if uh, you know from a user's perspective as you're going through it if you really think about that too much but from a group programming approach it's it's really fascinating how it's like huh this one little change like let's say instead of that side plank there you had wall balls that's a whole different game totally different game yeah yeah there's there's so many elements to the program design that maybe go overlooked but remember we're trying to get people to uh, have we're trying to create a a response from a particular dose. The response we want, there are ten maybe different doses that we could give to get some some response. Each of those ten <clears throat> is is has a different impact. Also, like sort of a different side effects, you know, to getting to that response. You're trying to create a a conditioning, you know, workout that gets people to, you know, work aerobic threshold stuff. So, you know, we could do, we could do kettlebell swings. We could do wall balls. We could do, uh, kipping pull-ups. We could put them on a salt bike. All right. All right. Each one of those might create, might get somebody into an aerobic threshold. Uh, they have the potential to too, ma- too many reps too few reps you know uh, of each might not do that might not accomplish that um you know doing 50 pull-ups in a workout versus 50 wall balls well that's going to impact the person's body differently elbows shoulders are going to have much different impact from wall balls than they are going to have from pull-ups what else did that person do this week that impacted their elbows and their shoulders put stress on that part of the body are you overloading that um, what's a safe way to, you know, get the response that you're looking for? That's going to have, not going to have this big net effect on the total system and their hips and their ankles and their knees. Oh, well, let's do this movement versus that movement. So yeah, making these subtle changes, uh, consciously and thoughtfully is what can get somebody feeling like, oh yeah, actually <laughs> I feel really good. I don't feel all banged up, you know? I mean, as an example, yesterday in my training, I think there was a total of like, you know, and and granted, like I have a lot of training experience. My training age is relatively advanced and I have pretty decent level fitness, but I had like probably three, close to 300 squats in my workout yesterday to all together. If you count, yeah, the various different things that I did, movements that I did and definitely over 200, um, and so today, you know, my hips are tight. <laughs> my hamstrings are a little tight. You know, they weren't like heavy necessarily, but I did a lot of air squats, I did a lot of wall balls, and I did a bunch of, you know, a good amount of snatches. 
So <laughs> what could I have gotten, you know, and some of, some of the training was just conditioning focus. It was about breathing. So could, could I have gotten that effect doing some other movements and then I maybe wake up today and not, you know, feel tight in my hips and my hamstrings. I'm not complaining about it by any means. I'm just saying that there's different ways of approaching things like that. Hope Mike is listening. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that's, um, you know, and it's part of the reason why we decided to, uh, I think we're going to decide to bring back this this thing which we offered in the past called our VIP group. Um, We're going to look at creating an opportunity for people to learn from, learn from, you know, learn from us what goes into think the thinking behind putting together a program like awaken training series um because there's a lot of information a lot of tools that are that are built in there that could help a lot of people just in thinking about their own training like you want to understand your training better you want to understand the the why behind what you're doing and we talk about being a thinking athlete it's a great opportunity for that if you're a coach you want to understand hey what was going into this Why, why are we doing that um that can help you certainly with your clients and the people that you work with. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating when you think about, I mean, I think about some of the individual clients that I have who, you know, they're not coaches, but for their own knowledge, they want to know the whys behind certain things and what goes into certain pieces and what I'm thinking that, that I think instills some confidence in them going through their own training Mm -hmm. and, and maybe an enhanced sense of like trust and purpose in it too. Like, yeah, this is, this is why this pain build that we're doing is important, right? Or this is why we're going not for time today versus like, you know, a for time workout. Um, or this is what the build is going to look like and how it's going to play out. Um, you know, I think that appeals to me just from a coach's perspective, but I know that people who are just going through their own training experience, um, understanding those variables can help you, you know, feel more bought in and translate to you being just more consistent and fulfilled with the different parts of the process. Yeah, completely. I mean, I've felt that for years. I've always wanted to know more about what I'm doing and, um, there is a concept within like coaching competitive fit, uh, competitive athletes in sports that sometimes you want somebody who doesn't like to, doesn't want to think they just want to be a doer and they're just mm-hmm. going to go out and give it everything they got and they sort of the less they know the better they perform um, but you know this is fitness and our audience is wanting to off you know whether you're competitive or not, you want to just look good and move well, like the plan is to do this for a long time. You know, we're not just like going out and playing, you know, high school football for a few years and just going to bash heads and then move on. You're going to, you're going to move, you're going to nourish yourself. You're going to be in the gym or doing something fitness related for a long time. Should you want to reap the benefits of this for your life? And if that's the case, then, the more you know, the m- the better you're going to navigate the obstacles that are coming your way. So it's definitely the, the thinking athlete mentality sets you up for so much more success in that way. Um, helps you appreciate why you're doing certain things so that you can give effort in the right way. Appreciates, helps you appreciate, you know, oh, that part of the training actually is really important. When I do it that way, it feels different. I mean, how many times here on site have you, you, you know, focused somebody on their at, r- doing the rest periods correctly? And they're like, whoa, that's hard, right? I mean, I just had Malia in yesterday, and she was doing, uh, she's in like kind of a deload week. She only had two sets of, of her workout to do of her, of her strength movements. It was a goblet squat and a weighted negatives uh, pull-ups. And I was on her for, like, correct tempo, correct loading, hitting her rep ranges, sticking to her rest periods. <laughs> and it was like two sets were done, and she was, like, you know, shaking because she had just put in so much effort, mm-hmm. which is like, okay, if she, if she had taken two minutes rest instead of 60 seconds rest, wouldn't have been the same thing. If I hadn't kind of 
coacher on that perfect tempo on those five second eccentrics wouldn't have gotten the same dose response you know so and then she i think she appreciated that she's like oh man that was way it was really good that we that you that got me to focus on those things today so she, we're trying to teach her that make sure she you know appreciates that that way the next 10 sessions that she does in here she hits her she hits the focus points and she gets that great you know response from her training totally it's like and then loses the body fat feels awesome and you know gets all the other results down the road but it starts with understanding knowing thinking and then executing yeah yeah it's like those little details that just can go overlooked until it's pointed out to you by somebody else and then yeah. you're like oh i never really thought about that yeah um is there anything else on this note that you want to leave people with Um, yeah, we started talking about just sort of like group designs and, and to speak to the, the group of listeners who, who may be tuning in that work with other clients, they coach people, they run gyms, don't give up on teaching people principles, why they're doing it. I was in a group fitness setting where a lot of people just wanted to come and do their, they want to, I want to just come and do it. Don't, I don't want to think about it. And I know that's, a, that's a, that's a struggle, but don't give up the fight of trying to teach somebody something every time that they're in, give them something to walk away with. So they better understand why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and the program that you offer is, gives you opportunities to do that. If somebody comes in and they do a 40-minute AMRAP and they're just going for it the whole time and the music's loud, it's fun. I mean, it's a good vibe. It's good energy. But if you do that every day, there's not an opportunity to coach people. There's not an opportunity to give them those those nuggets of information that are going to deepen their connection to their training. So make sure there's a balance of that. I'm not saying get rid of the 40-minute AMRAPs. Uh, some people, you know... Members love that sometimes. They love to just sweat, and they, and that's a great thing for a Saturday workout. That's like the universal Saturday Metcon. <laughs> Suffer Saturday. Suffer Saturday. <laughs> I've actually not heard that before. That's funny. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, but keep, keep working on that, you know, and that's uh, so fight the good fight. Yeah, well, uh, any follow-up questions on this one, please head over to speakpipe.com forward slash look good, move well. Let me reiterate, speakpipe.com forward slash look good, move well is your portal to speak directly to us. Tell us what you need to hear. We love hearing from you guys, and it's how we get a few good ideas. And I only say a few because we've only had a few submissions at this point. <laughs> I was expecting lots of submissions, <laughs> but we've only had a few. So hit us up, and I promise if you actually send something in, you will have a very high likelihood of being featured on our show, the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Elizabeth Brown was on the last episode. She, she gave us that whole topic. It could be you. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.